How's it going, man? Yeah, good, you? Good, good. What's happening? Good. I'm in Scotland training at the moment, so I'm quite tired in a hotel. Okay, okay. Moving around a bit. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I've, I've been splitting my camp between home, uh, Scottish hit squad and Cal Bond. It's been, it's been a great camp. Okay. Got a picture of some of your mates here behind me. All the, I don't know if you can see them. Fisher and Carl Eleanor. I'll find it for you. Oh, yeah, where are they? Let me find them for you. Oh, yeah, down there. Oh, yeah. Good guys. Good guys. <laughs> <laughs> and how's things going, man? You good? Yeah, great, great. Just looking forward to fight now. I'm getting sick, sick, sick of training people all the time, fighting people every day. <laughs> and um well firstly thank you very much for your time man i know it's you, you're deep in your camp you're in the, the last hurdle now so really appreciate you taking out some time to talk to us man i always got time i always got time thank you man appreciate thank you, you. Yeah, thank you man you, you you said you're in scotland now i just wanted to ask you for you you said you split your camp up you're in scotland and you're at team carbon talk us through how that camp's being structured at the moment uh, basically, I've been one week. I've been going to Calborn. One week, I've been well for three days, two days uh, to Calborn, then up to Scotland. And I've got a good, I've got a good camp at home. You know, I'll do my pad work, my game plan. I've got good sparring at home as well. You know, but uh, got some, got some, got some killers in Scotland. Got Paul Craig, who's like a uh, uh, ranked fourteen in the world, some light heavyweight, and I've been going to. Cal Bond to, to spar with Tom Aspinall, who's ranked like 12th in the world now. He's just yeah. been Olofsky, you know, so uh, but it's been great, you know. Okay, so nice nice experience on both sides. Um, you, you you mentioned back home. What's the what's the MMA scene like in the in the northeast at the moment? Oh, it's crippled. It's crippled. No, no fights going on. Just, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I, luckily enough, I'm signed to a big show. I can do pay per view only events, you know. So I, I've been so lucky, but like uh, the young, the young guys, up and coming guys, you know, it's crippled. The, 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 it's crippled the scene, you know. It's terrible. Yeah, it's a, it's a tough time, unfortunately, all around the world. We're we're lucky enough. It seems the EFC is on its way back. Yeah, at long last, it's been over a year. So hopefully, hopefully, oh, it can cool. all re all return back to normal sometime soon. For before yeah, we move hopefully, on, hopefully. I have a very important question to ask you uh, about a listed name for you, the, the chippy champ, chimpanzee. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? It, it's, I think uh, one of your mates, I think, has uh, taken over your, your um, what's it, Wikipedia or whatever. They've Wikipedia. Listed, yeah, they've got a name, your alternate name is the chippy chimpanzee. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. <laughs> so they the, said the... Somebody changed it a while back saying that I, uh, I would always have like a big uh, fish and chip supper before every fight from Cleethorpe's Pier. I haven't yeah. seen it yet, but I, I like I like anything like that, you know. I'm fighting for us. So we can see the chippy chim chimpanzee on your fight shorts one of these days. Oh, I do. I do like a chip shop tea, you know. I, I really enjoy a chip shop tea, so I might I might do that just for them. <laughs> you, you you mentioned that that's a, a bit of a pre-fight ritual you have you go sit down and have a bit of fish and chips is, is, is that still happening no that was that was just on wikipedia somebody said somebody put that on wikipedia <laughs> oh, so uh, someone's just fight, made all fight, of this up <laughs> yeah fight day i don't i don't eat a lot of food i'll have a light breakfast on bananas <laughs> and a cereal but i don't eat anything fight day i like it quite empty Oh, that's awesome. So someone's actually taking the time out to go and mess with you, mess yeah. with your stuff. That's yeah, I, amazing. I, 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 I think I, I found out and I shared it first, you know, it's a, I'm always a full ass. Awesome, man. Um, one, of the, one of the reasons I really wanted to talk to you was, you, am, am I right that you have a South African heritage? I know you and Drickus had a bit of banter back and forth. Just, just talk us through uh, the South African side and, and, and how you and Drickus met. <laughs> Uh, no, no, I've got a Dutch heritage, Dutch heritage, but uh, me, me and Drickus met on a, a KSW a few years ago, you know, and uh, he's a great guy, you know, I know he likes to talk shit and stuff on the way and stuff, <laughs> but he's a, he, like, he probably won't want me to tell anybody, but he, he's a very nice, humble young man, you know, he's a, he's a great guy, you know, so we kind of hit it off and we kind of shared a few cards together and whatnot, and we had, we had this bet on uh, the Rugby World Cup that if uh, England won in the final, he would wear my badge. The, the British badge on his on his top, then um, 
if South Africa won, I would win where they're bad, you know, and obviously you guys won and we lost. But uh, I, th- I think he, he was, he, I think he forgot all about it, you know, it was like a year <laughs> later because of COVID, but I thought he won the badge, but I always settle my bets. I always, always settle my bets. <laughs> awesome, man. It was it was quite cool to see how that all came about. Um, and yeah, Drickus is a good guy. I'm, I'm sure he's sadly missed at KSW now. Yeah, yeah, but he's on, he's uh, he's on fire at the moment. You know, I wish him well wherever he goes. You know, and I'm sure he, he'll 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 do very well for himself. Fantastic, man. You 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 know one or two things about the UFC. You you spent a few years there. And I know it's it's quite uh, common knowledge now. You've spoken about dealing with anxiety and stuff like that in your time in the UFC. Obviously, you had to face guys like Stipe Miocic and uh, Matt Mitrione and, and and the who's who of the heavyweight division at the time. Talk us talk us through how how things were during that time and, and how you really overcame it. I think it's a great story for young fighters to hear. If you if you wouldn't mind, it was it was just a terrible like my I didn't uh, I never knew why anxiety. It's, uh... I'd always had it since I was a boy. I kind of got raised with it. So, like, I didn't know why on fight night I was terrified. I, didn't, I hated the full experience, and I, was, I wasn't I was living up my potential. In the gym, I was a killer, you know. I, I was beating everybody up. Then come fight night, I would fall to bits. I would be terrified. Just I, I would beat myself up before. Like, I, all those fights I lost at UFC, I'd lost before I even got in the cage, you know. Then... uh I got kicked out of the UFC. I had, I had a couple of dotted wins about that. I lost the local scene. And uh, I kind of hit the bottle, hit the drink, had a, like, a really, really bad time. And uh, I was like just, just worrying about everything. I was like going mad. You know, I was like having to check the, I checked the door 10 times to see it was open. I was like, uh, I thought people were going to steal my dog. So I had a camera put in my bedroom so I could sh- see the dog when I was out. You know, I was going quite strange. Then, uh, I ended up Googling it. I Googled, uh, what is this fear of everything? And I said, you might have anxiety. But I'd heard of anxiety before. But like, if someone said to me, oh, I'm feeling quite anxious, I would have said, oh, man, oh, what the anxiety, what's that, you know? But that, that's, yeah. what that's what I've been suffering, like, crippled from my entire life. And I was so lucky that when I went to the doctor, and I got put on a course of pills, and the pills just uh, it took three months to work. But the pills cured me, you know. It was like a, like a, I, I think five. Things. Everyone who ever says about anxiety, I tell them get on these pills, and it hasn't worked for anybody else. You know, I'm, I'm extremely lucky that uh, this this medication has worked for me. You know, and like I, I've done some other therapy and things, but uh, nah, these pills. It's, uh, but I mean, I, I would like to not need the pills, but at the same time, like since I've took the pills, my craving has took off, and I'm, I'm doing great. You know. Okay, and do you do you use any sort of like sports psychologist or, or like mental coach, anything like that at the moment? No, I do. Uh, I've uh, researched a lot. I do uh, positive affirmations every day, just for the fight and stuff. Just uh, I do a lot of mental planning and uh, sort of things. But it's like uh, the the pills fixed me. Then I had had some therapy and things in, in the meantime, but. Uh, I should really try and come off them, but it's just things are going so well and there's no side effects. I think, why not just stay on them until at least till I'm done fighting, then I, then I can cross the hurdle, you know? Sure, absolutely, man. Well, glad you've figured it out and you're, and you're still fighting and fit and healthy. Yeah. Besides the anxiety, what is it like if you look back now and look at facing a guy like Stipe and, and then see how far he's gone? I mean, I think you're, you're considered the, the heavyweight goat of KSW, uh, Stipe has gone on to be considered the heavyweight goat of, of the UFC. What's it like if you if you look back in retrospect, having having faced someone like Stipe? Well, I mean, I, I fought him, but I, like I didn't lose because Stipe was better than me. Stipe may very well be better than me. You know, he's like he's, he's like the goat of the heavyweight division. But I didn't lose because Stipe was better than me. I lost because I, I I bottled the fight. I was scared to fight. That's why I lost, you know. But uh, I, I mean, I would love to run it back, you know. But like, uh, I, I think I could beat anyone on my day. People say, "Oh, you're crazy," but you have to think like that as a fight, you know. Sure. So maybe KSW can get the checkbook out if he's not sticking around at the UFC any longer. <laughs> Sign him yeah, up. I'll do it. I'll do it. Let's do it. But I think I think he'll stay at the UFC for the time. I think for sure. <clears throat> Talking about, uh, we mentioned the KSW goat. Uh, Obviously, we spoke about your struggles of the UFC, and then you, you've hit this like a really good stride at KSW. What do you think has been the the main factor in 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 your success, if we can put it that way? Oh, it's, a, 
to tie. I've always been this good of a fighter. I just couldn't fight. I just couldn't fight. The anxiety stopped me. Stopped me winning. If uh, when I was if, some, if I was twenty year old and somebody gave me these pills, I, I would have dominated UFC. I would have I would have smashed it, and I'd have been fantastic, you know. But uh, I didn't know I had anxiety. It's a bit, I've all, I've always been a I'm, I'm athletically gifted. I'm a hard worker. I, I, I've got good coaches. Like the, I, everything there was a perfect recipe for success. But ju- I just couldn't, couldn't fight like well because of the anxiety. And now that's gone. It's, it's my time to take over now. Fantastic. Speaking of which, you've got your fifth title defense in a, in a rematch in KSW coming up. It's soon next weekend, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next weekend. Next weekend. I can't. I cannot wait to fight. This camp has been hell. Just ah, oh, it's been working so hard, fighting these top guys. Like, uh, just been hell. Hell, I can't wait to get in there. It's like a holiday in this fight compared to what I've been doing myself in the gym. <laughs> I, I wanted to ask you about this fight because it's 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 a rematch. It's the light heavyweight champion uh, uh, Thomas Narkin. But the first fight kind of like it's a strange rematch for me looking from the outside. I mean, obviously, we, we, we follow KSW. We were a lot more invested when Drickus was there, but it, it, was a, it was a dominant victory. So, so what sort of spurs the rematch? I think um, the lack of competition for us both. You know, he's kind of cleaned out the light heavyweight division. I've cleaned out the heavyweight division, you know. And uh, so I, th- I think that's it. You know, there's no, there's no one to make the fight, no one to end the fight. Fight so I might as well put it back. And he, he has he's had two dominant dominant wins since, but um, like I believe it's gonna be exactly the same stomp and it was last time, if not worse, you know. So obviously I am feeling like an absolute killer at the moment. So I think uh I like you know if I if I if I read yesterday's newspaper again, you know what's gonna I'm gonna see? The same old story, you know. So it's it's, it's, it's madness, you know, but I'll win, I'm happy to do it, you know. It, it, and it is a challenging fight. What about the motivation side or like, how do you, I mean, obviously in, in, in this kind of situation where you've beaten somebody so dominantly and now the rematch, obviously things have changed. You've both improved, you've both evolved. Is there like that creeping sensation, you know, like I've beaten this guy before, like I, I don't really need to stress too much about it or, or is there a little bit of extra motivation now? No, um, I'm, I'm extremely motivated. Um, out of all my, fa- like I, I'm the guard, Special fighters as my brothers. We were the same sort of people. We're all, we're all from common backgrounds. We work hard, you know. A lot of us haven't had access to education. I love professional fight. Every, every guy, every opponent I've ever faced, I've got a kinship with them. But but Narcon, he he is not a nice guy. He's disrespectful. He's uh, arrogant. He's not what I, I. He's not. He's not my brother. The rest of these guys have all been my brothers. This guy is not my brother. He's a bad guy. You know what I'm going to get him again. Fantastic, man. And uh, you're going to be wearing a slightly tighter pants this time around? Oh, I've got to duct tape, got to duct tape my pants to my, you know, he's going to, you're going to surprise me for, <laughs> he pulled my pants down again. You... He did that on purpose, you know, he did that, on, there's no, there's no way he did not like, do that on purpose. Like, uh, why, why would you do it? Like, you know, if you grab someone's pants, they're going to fall down. You, yeah. It's ma- madness, madness. <laughs> but it, it, it also, I'm, I'm sure it got your social media following up. So he actually did you a favor because you became quite famous after that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm famous for getting my pants pulled down. Uh, <laughs> if I had a loss, time, that would hurt, you know. But since I'm wonderful, I can, I can laugh at it, you know. It's, it, it is really funny. Yeah. Wait, There's wait. a guy, one of my friends, uh, reversed the video. So yeah. like I'm pulling my pants down and he's putting them back up, you know. It's, you know. <laughs> were you were you are you at all offended when they when they show that picture and they like blur out your ass cheeks or is it? If you understand the reason. <laughs> no, I think, I think it's hilarious. You know, like, uh, we we kind of the, the the martial arts thing. We all mock each other back home. We're yeah. quite cruel. We have cruel jokes. We mock. We we're terrible. You know. So this is this is all funny. You know, quite lighthearted to us. <laughs> awesome man. Um. One of the one of the last things I wanted to bring up on your Wikipedia is it's listed you as the fish cake with gravy Cleethorpe champion for three years in a row. <laughs> I haven't seen it, but I love it. I love it. You know, oh, it's good. I like stuff like that. So just to clear it up, you're you're, you're not a fish cake and, and gravy champion of any sorts at the moment. No, no, not yet. Maybe one day. I still that would be my next challenge. <laughs> Fantastic. 
Phil, thank you so much for your time, man. Best of luck for the rest of your camp. Uh, we'll definitely be watching this one. It's it's exciting. Um, we we want to see you defend that title ten times. So don't don't stop fighting just yet and, hey, and really man. set the record. Nice talk, you, bud. Thank you, my brother. Have a good one. All the best. Catch you later, bud. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Thank you.